Let's take this example. We have x by y is equal to z by w. x by y is equal to z by w implies y by x is equal to w by z. Now, what is this about? Two ratios are equal and their inverse ratios are also equal. Yes, it is nothing but the invertendo rule. Now, do we have invertendo among these? No, so it's going to be none of these. This is not dividendo, this is not complementendo, this is not alternendo. The process is definitely clearly invertendo rule, which is not among. So it's none of these is the option that we have over here. Yes, and we have none of these. So it's a simple understanding. Let's recap really whether we remember these things or no. Let's move over to the next problem. We have here P by Q is equal to R by S. P upon Q is equal to R by S. And you have P minus R upon Q minus S. So you're subtracting the antecedents and you're subtracting the consequence and they are equal. So this is definitely subtrahendo. So it is subtrahendo. So that is the option that we have over here. P by Q is R by S and which is each of these is equal to P minus R upon Q minus S and that is subtrahendo rule. Let's check what the next question we have is A by B is C by D. So A, B, C and D are in proportion is equal to A plus B upon A minus B, C plus D upon C minus D. The process is called definitely not complemento, definitely not dividendo. Yes, it is complemento and dividendo because remember one more thing you need to take care. If it is A plus B, it has to be C plus D in the numerator. If it is A minus B in the denominator, it should be C minus D in the denominator too. So, our option is going to be complemento and dividendo. And let's check whether that's what we have. Yes, it's complemento and dividendo. Let's move to the next problem. So, if you look at the summary of the properties of proportion, we did cross multiplication, we did invertendo, we did alternendo, complemento, dividendo, complemento and dividendo, addendo and subtrahendo. This was just an introduction to these things. Now further, when we apply them, we will be able to get a deeper understanding of these properties that we talk about. So let's apply these things in the next few problems.